Alex, I'm coming to you again because you've updated the docket with a very intriguing <laughs> uh, topic name here. It just says fixing Unreal Engine issues. Oh, yeah. So so take it away. What's been fixed? Or, or nothing's what is been fixed. Being, okay. okay. <laughs> nothing's been fixed, to unfortunately. The topic. But <laughs> yeah, this is mainly a, nothing's been fixed because these are that's the whole point of the discussion. Um, but basically, there have been two presentations uh, at Unreal Fest that I was linked in the past, and I mentioned it actually last week as an aside, uh, but at least the presentations have been published at this point. The videos oh, cool. from these presentations haven't been published. And these are, Unreal Fest is about, mainly about uh, third party users of Unreal, kind of talking about their experiences with making games on the engine and all the things around that. And there were two presentations, one from Jaroslav Tomasz Rudski, Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly there. Um, how to how small open doors can lead to better CPU utilization and bigger games. This is from CD Projekt Red. Then the second one is from Grant Johnson uh, from Creative Assembly, uh, right? That's their name. Uh, they were making the game Hyenas. Yes, and uh, that was based on later version of Unreal Engine four with some Unreal Engine five backporting i believe and that game uh was canceled but uh they still did a lot of technology investment in it and i think it's gonna kind of pour into their next project at some point whenever that is and the both of the presentations are almost about the same core issue is that when you move around in unreal engine games there are a whole variety of sources not just shader compilation stutter. They actually basically don't even talk about that. There's a variety of sources in Unreal Engine 5 and 4 which cause it so that there can be large frame time spikes. And they all come down to the fact that the engine is built as a great general purpose tool to allow small teams that don't have engineering experience uh, or time to make a game. But as soon as the game is filled with a lot of content and a density of content and a great variety of content, the loading and deloading, as well as the actualization of like gameplay code per frame, it's very variable when you start moving around. And the game engine for both of these games was not purpose fit for what they want to do. CD Projekt Red, here they're basically talking about making dense open world games, and they're saying the engine as it is and was was not good enough for us to get good performance. We got big frame time spikes when going around the game world. They don't want that because they're CD Projekt Red. And for Hyena's case, the, the way the game world was constructed with a lot of unique instances, as in objects that were placed in a certain way, and a lot of them, well, it led to massive frame time spikes when they were walking around their world, which didn't work at all, of course, for a fast-paced shooter that's supposed to be hitting 60 all the time, right? Yes. So they both came up with very unique solutions uh, to fixing the issue. In CD Projekt Red's case, uh, it's kind of like cutting out and ignoring aspects of uh, like feature sets of Unreal. And in... Uh, the Creative Assembly case, it's about them actually completely going around Unreal's primary setup of how rendering is done and making their own. And wow. uh, they're both kind of involved uh, presentations. Uh, the, sadly, though, I don't have the notes for the CD Projekt Red one, I believe, but uh, the, the, the notes are fascinating for each one. So if you want to these these link you can find them online and i highly recommend reading through them but the general idea is to get good performance developers that really care about that can't use base unreal engine for a variety of reasons depending upon their game type and i think both of these presentations really emphasize that if you want great performance you have to roll your own aspect or limit the capabilities of the engine limit it to like a subset of its features to actually get good performance and then work from there. That's kind of like what uh, CD Projekt Reds is about. That's a kind of nuclear option though, right? Because, you know, surely the point is to lean into all of these features that Epic has developed. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them are about like, so th they're not saying don't use Lumen or something like that. They're not necessarily saying that. They're saying, well, don't take advantage of this like 
way the actor system works. Use something different than the actor system. Right. Uh, uh, that, you know, don't rely on blueprints. Like that's something that the presentations don't really talk about. But you know, like these are just like generic things. And to me, I think this is a great discussion because we've had this in the past before when we talked about Unity, where we think like Ori and the Will of the Wisps is a great running Unity game. But then yep. John has all these 50 hertz and 60 FPS container games in his brain at the same time, right? Right. Mm. Like when you use the stock engine for something more ambitious, then you just start running into issues. And I don't know how you feel about this. Like, do you think it's like, where's the responsibility at the end of the day here? Uh, I'm, I'm asking an opening question to you too. Like, is it mm. epic side to pro to provide an engine that is perhaps more performant in some ways, or is it the, de the developers who should really be I, taking this to task? I mean, I kind of feel like this is some somewhat on the developers and that they're the ones that decide the scope and direction of the project, right? Mm -hmm. And a lot of this stuff you should be aware of. I mean, I understand that things come up during development. It's a, diff it's a very difficult situation, but truthfully, you would want both to come together and work in tandem where it's like okay this is what we're trying to do and you know epic would be there to potentially support them right. in their endeavors and you would hope for a nice collaboration mm -hmm. but mm. Rich? i don't know what to say about it because um yes on the one hand it's going to be the developer to choose which engine they're going to be using with uh for their for their projects right and I suspect these decisions are not taken lightly, but at the same time, it might be the case that, you know, their publisher has got a block deal with Epic to use Unreal Engine. So it might not be a decision that's actually in their hands mm -hmm. as such. Um, but on the flip side, um, with, if we're seeing systemic problems with Unreal Engine that are manifesting in a range of games, surely it's, you know, it's down to Epic to, to fix it, you would think. <laughs> Um, yeah. I know that's that's you know that's and it is having a game changing impact on titles like you know I'm going to say it Jedi Survivor you know <laughs> um, that's that's that had issues with Fallen Order those issues were still there in Survivor um, you know it's problematic and you know it, it's not just that as well I mean even you know if we're thinking about companies with a proven history of uh, quote unquote bespoke technology you know you don't really get much better than the house mark but um returnal had mm -hmm. issues yeah which, oh, right. which seem to be unreal engine related they do um you know so there's a there's a lot going on here um i don't think there's one simple answer to your question alex yeah well, unfortunately. I, that that's the kind of uh what do you how do you call it like the dialectic here is like it's it's kind of like on both and they rely upon one another in this uh, cd project red presentation you know they're talking about oh, using yeah. like different streaming and uh the thing is uh, some of the things that they worked on are to be merged back into unreal engine yeah. and i think that is part of the technology collab that needs to happen as a part of this um and i really hope that's what we see more in the future from larger uh, firms that are working with Unreal, like we were pretty un unhappy with them switching engines, and we were also pretty unhappy with a lot of other, like Crystal Dynamics and I guess yeah. IDOS and everyone that switches because we love that stuff. But I really want to see all those resources at least allowing for better features and better performance in the base version of the engine. Even though, right. absolutely, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like the hyenas presentation, though, um, that is all so very specific. Like they wouldn't ever like what they did doesn't really work for other projects. But you know, I, I still think it's good knowledge to get out there for a possible solution for if you're having performance issues in Unreal, what you can do. They went pretty mm -hmm. nuclear, though. The hyenas presentation is crazy. <laughs> yeah. There should, well, we have seen improvements in our Unreal Engine, and hopefully this will generate more improvements. And obviously, you know, there's, there's a lot of great stuff happening with Unreal Engine that is folding back into the main core code base, I guess. I mean, we're still not fully aware of the coalition's uh, inputs into Unreal Engine. But we, you know, we've seen, we've had a taste of E Day, and we know that it's we know that it's going to be great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you know, I think it's going to be the case that it will get there, that these issues will be addressed, because they they are 
prevalent. And it's, you know, it is to the point where somebody pointed it out this week, you know, it was actually a criticism of digital found fee. It's like, if you point out these issues uh, in a specific technology like Unity or Unreal Engine, then people are worried about games that are coming out that, you know, that um, that are based on Unreal Engine or whatever. Mm-hmm. It, it's, but, you know, it's a, it sets a, an expectation level. Uh, to to answer that particular criticism, I would just say that, you know, nothing is beyond criticism. And if the aim of the criticism is to improve quality across the board, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't you know, think so shouldn't be hand wa- You can't, you know, you can't really hand wave away issues, technical issues, in the same way that any reviewer can't hand wave away, you know, issues that they have, which may be of, of different discipline, right? It's just how it happens that we concentrate on technology. Yeah, that's the way it is. Uh, but yeah, interesting presentations for sure. I mean, I just feel really sad about hyenas. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they poured what so much bummer. work and effort into that. And Sega, it's such an expensive project and it just disappears. It's kind of sad. Why would they even have funded that in the first place? I don't know. It just feels like that the writing was on the wall from the beginning. These types of games like succeeding. Extraction shooters. Ain't easy. Yeah. yeah, like it's just, it's such a tough market. I don't know. It just feels like way too risky to have even invested in this in the first place. I mean, yeah. I, I, I'm hoping though that this presentation uh, shows that they're going to use the the technology that they did develop for it for some other project in the future. Alien Isolation 2, for instance. That would be sick. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, really. Seriously. I think that's in development. I would love that. Is that has that is been it? rumored? Has that been rumored? Wait. An Aliens project by Sega? Am I, am I making there, things up? There is a VR Alien game Maybe coming, that's what I'm thinking sure. of. Hmm. I hope not. But I don't know about Isolation <laughs> 2. I really, really, really hope that happens. So that would be sweet. Yeah, it's such a good game. I love game. that game. Mm-hmm. Still okay. looks amazing, too. 